The Australian Aborigines have the world's oldest continuous culture, with estimates dating it back possibly as far as 100,000 years. From this unique culture arose a unique instrument, the didgeridoo. The music of the didgeridoo has its origins in the mystical Aboriginal dream time. The sound of the didgeridoo can vary from haunting and mysterious to calming and healing, or it can pulsate with the excitement of the hunt. To play the didgeridoo, involves skillful coordination of the lips, tongue and vocal cords and in particular mastering the art of circular breathing. This enables the playing of continuous music without pausing for breath. Alastair Black was taught to play the didgeridoo by Aboriginal elders in Arnhem Land in the Northern Territory of Australia. He's now a highly respected teacher of the didgeridoo himself travels the country sharing his skills and love of the instrument. Okay, just a few more breaths um, before you go back to doing the staccato part so that you've got a bit more power and a bit louder like this. No worries. Great sound. Okay, so that's good. So that was a lot better. Can you feel the difference? Yeah, yeah. yeah. In this program, Alastair reveals the secret of mastering the didgeridoo, and with the help of his Aboriginal friends, he also shows how a didgeridoo is made, how to select the right didgeridoo for you, and shows its use in the traditional Aboriginal dance. Good day. My name's Alastair Black from Australia. I learned to play the didgeridoo many years ago now, assisted by my Aboriginal friends throughout Australia, and in particular from Arnhem Land in the north. The didgeridoo, or yidiki, as it's more commonly known in Arnhem Land, may be played standing, sitting, or whilst walking, depending on the occasion. I've divided the learning process up into two sections. Step one, basic drone. A loose lip blowing technique. Relax, give yourself permission to look a little unusual. Let's do some face stretching exercises. Lick your lips. Vibrate them as if blowing a raspberry. Now we transfer this loose lip blowing technique to the mouthpiece of the didgeridoo. Initially you will find that if we have a medium blowing pressure, we produce the clear crisp sound. If one attempts to blow too hard or too soft, the drone will be diffused. Step two variations on the drone. Initially we vary the sound coming out of the didgeridoo by simply blowing harder and softer. You may have noticed that more pressure was required on the lips as you blow harder to maintain the clarity of drone 
and you can ease the pressure off your lips as you blow softer. Still on step two, we vary the sound coming out of the didgeridoo by changing the shape of our mouth and position of our tongue. I find that most of my students find this the most challenging exercise in learning to play didgeridoo. And why that is so is because as we contract our cheeks, pull them in like that, then generally when you're learning, it alters the sound of didgeridoo and in fact cuts it right out. And the reason for that is that the lips have changed shape and they've pulled in like a goldfish and so doing have broken the seal on the mouthpiece. A couple of exercises I find useful in overcoming this are one, which is what I call my mouth rinsing exercise. Simply puffing out your cheeks and then sucking them in between your teeth, keeping your lips closed. This exercise does two things. It strengthens the cheek muscles, increases your flexibility, and allows the lips to then mold the mouthpiece even though you're expanding and contracting your cheeks. Also, I find it important to watch yourself in front of the mirror because then you can see what you're doing with your cheeks. Step three, vocals. I'll vary the sound coming through the didgeridoo by imitating a number of different Australian animal and bird sounds. I'll start off with the mopoke owl. The sound that I was making to create that was simply going and in fact, if you notice, when I make any sounds, I need to keep my lips very still, like an Australian talking, so the flies don't get in your mouth. Because if you move your lips, then you'll interrupt the drone. Now, I'm going to make the sound of the bush pigeon. sound is and now I'm going to make the sound of Australia's native dog the dingo without the didgeridoo it would sound like this The kookaburra is another unique sound of Australia known throughout the world. Without the didgeridoo, the kookaburra sound is created like this. The feral donkey is well known throughout Arnhem Land and has been included in Aboriginal myth and story in recent years. It sounds like this. With a little bit of voice modulation to create the sound of the donkey. The brolga, a beautiful dancing bird from the north of Australia, has an unusual sound that sounds something like this. And without the didgeridoo, what I have found useful in imitating the different animal and bird sounds through didgeridoo is to close my eyes and imagine that I can see the big bush pigeon sitting on a tree and copy it and then in fact to put more feeling into my playing I can pretend that I am the pigeon and this was a traditional Aboriginal way of encapsulating the spirit of the animal and bird into didgeridoo playing. 
A further development to using your vocals is to talk through the didgeridoo. And I'll demonstrate that by saying, Good day, mate. How are you going? What are you doing, eh? So listen carefully. You can have a lot of fun by exploring different sounds and developing your own unique style. Step 4. Tongue. Traditionally, players would utilize the tongue to maintain rhythm throughout their playing styles. For ease of learning, I've utilized a technique that allows us to imitate, first of all, the kangaroo. Now imagine the kangaroo hopping across a plane. Boing, boing, boing. What I'm going to do now is create that impression using my tongue. What I was doing then was simply resting my tongue on the roof of my mouth, back from the teeth, and then pulling away quickly, creating a little vacuum and making a sound like this. I'll demonstrate that once more. Now imagine a boomerang flying through the air and I'll create that sound using my tongue through the didgeridoo. What I was doing then was very simply pulsating my tongue in the middle of my mouth. First of all there's a constant stream of air coming out like that and the lips are vibrating of course to produce the drone and then the tongue pulsates in the middle of the mouth just backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards breaking up the flow of air and it would sound something like this without the didgeridoo. I'll demonstrate it once more on the didgeridoo. Once you've mastered that level of skill, then we can create sounds using different words or phrases with emphasis on the tongue. For example, I'm going to use the word dodo didero with the emphasis on the tongue, the du 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 sound, and you'll hear a rhythm beginning to form. To help you master this technique, practice some of these simple tongue exercises. <coughs> Step 5. Overtones or harmonics. In the normal course of events in playing didgeridoo, you will hear a sweet, subtle, higher trill sound that passes through the main basic drone of didgeridoo and adds a certain richness and depth and colour. This will occur spontaneously as you play, particularly with a good didgeridoo. However, to create the effect deliberately, I find that if I play with my cheek squeezed in and tongue forward in my mouth, I can enhance the sound that I'm looking for. You may have found in your practice it does take a certain dexterity and coordination between lips and cheeks. So persist and keep practicing. Now by incorporating these five primary ways of producing sound we can create musical rhythms.
circular breathing. Physiologically, it's impossible to breathe in and out at the same time. However, we can achieve circular breathing by following a series of coordination exercises which I have graded into eight steps. Step one, strengthening the cheek muscles. Standing in front of a mirror, expand and contract your cheeks a little bit like this. What I'm actually doing is I'm puffing out my cheeks and I'm sucking them in between my teeth, keeping my lips sealed. And this exercise is designed to strengthen the muscles and increase the flexibility, which will be very useful in the following exercises. Step two, with both hands free, fill your cheeks with air and squeeze your cheeks together very deliberately. That resultant farting sound indicates you're on the right track. Now pay attention to only squeezing the air out that's in your mouth, no blowing. Step three, sitting up straight or standing straight, take a short, sharp, quick breath through the nose using your whole upper torso. Now, combining the short, sharp breath with the cheek squeeze, the basic principle of circular breathing can be attained. With a little bit of practice, you will find you can attain that skill. An additional exercise that will support you in this learning process is to fill your mouth with air and then to breathe in and out through your nose at the same time while maintaining a mouthful of air. If you have trouble with this exercise, try holding a mouthful of water whilst you breathe in and out through your nose. Step four. Now repeat step three However, do not use your hands. Use your cheek power to expel the air out of your mouth as you take the short breath through your nose into your lungs. And furthermore, utilize the air from your lungs through vibrating lips, creating the sound that will produce the drone on the didgeridoo. Step five, we now literally translate step four onto the mouthpiece of the didgeridoo. Step six, this exercise is a little more challenging. We have to slow down our lip vibration as we expel the air with our cheeks and breathe in through our nose to create the sound that will produce the drone on the didgeridoo. Be patient with this exercise because I've found in my experience it can take a number of days to a few weeks to attain the coordination level with the lips to create the drone as we breathe in. Once achieved, however, we can speed the process up and eliminate the gap. And there you have basic circular breathing. Step seven. To further reinforce this newly acquired skill of circular breathing, I'll get a glass of water with a straw in it and I'll use the same techniques we've gone through using the straw as a didgeridoo. Watch the bubbles very carefully.
The continuous stream of bubbles indicates you're doing it correctly. A complementary approach to circular breathing that seems to be useful for a lot of people is to blow your didgeridoo and squeeze your cheeks continuously in and out. A bit like using a blacksmith's bellows on a forge. Watch me carefully. This technique could take from a few days to a few weeks to master. However, once mastered, it's very easy to incorporate the circular breathing, and I'll demonstrate. I'll play didgeridoo, squeeze my cheeks, and every second squeeze, I'll take a short, sharp breath. Now, if you practice diligently, enjoy yourselves, and follow through the step-by-step -step process, you too soon will be playing didgeridoo. Here we've got a eucalyptus woolly butt sapling. And you can see down this end, there's a big hole. And in fact, this hole goes all the way through the timber. And how you would have picked it, there would have been a little mound of dirt growing at the base or around the base of the tree, that was the home of the termites. The top of the tree, the foliage, would be dying off. At that stage, you can cut it off, take it back to camp, shape it up with a small tomahawk and with steel files nowadays, and then you end up with something looking like this. And you can see that this didgeridoo has been opened out on the end to give it a trumpet effect, which increases the volume of sound for the same amount of effort. Traditionally, these were hollowed out further like this with a digging stick with a piece of quartz that had been tied on the end of the stick with kangaroo sinew and then, then sealed with a spinifex gum, made a very effective chisel. And you can see how there's more of a shape in this didgeridoo, a lot of wood's been taken off. And the idea of that is to allow more resonance to be present in the playing of the instrument. If the didgeridoo is too thick, it deadens the sound. And then on our other end, we can see a piece of beeswax has been shaped to make a mouthpiece. Here we've got the next stage, putting a base coat on, ready for painting. Charcoal is used a good deal, mixed with a fixative in preparation for your painting. And Sometimes, uh, well nowadays, quite often, acrylics are used as well. And here we have the finished product. In fact, this is one of Munnery's didgeridoos featuring the goanna. And you can see the rich earth tones that tie in with the whole Australian bush theme. Good day, John. How's it going? Yeah, coming along. What's the story on this didge, John? Well, because the, the goanna actually fits nice on the digits, it's the right shape. Yeah. Um, and you've got the goanna. Well, these are the colours of the, colours of the earth here, the, 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 the red ochre, the yellow, and I also use a very dark brown. Yeah. On this particular one here, you know, I do that, that, that that's actually a water hole. Right. That's just a little, the bush that grow in that, you know what I mean, the red berries yeah. on there. Uh, that's bush tucker, eh? That's bush tucker, yeah. Well, there's a presence, you know, of the of red Aboriginal people and that. And because the uh, one, foot, one foot going down and one foot going up, you know, he's, it's, a, it's a cycle. Yeah. Life's a cycle. Now that you can play didgeridoo, you need to know what to look for in choosing an instrument. What I've found pretty useful as a guideline is to find an instrument between one meter and one and a half meters long. The one that I've got here is about a meter 35, and you notice how it tapers from a small end and expands with a trumpet effect to a large end. And this one's about between 9 and 10 centimetres across at the trumpet base, which gives a good megaphone effect. Mouthpiece end, about um, 3 centimetres. Make sure the walls aren't too thick and that the didgeridoo's not too heavy, because if it's too heavy, it tends to deaden the sound 
and I've noticed they're prone to splitting, having so much wood. If it's too thin, on the other hand, then the sound tends to be too echoey and too hollow, like tubing, plastic tubing. So you need that happy medium to get the nice, rich, balanced sound. Didgeridoos come in all shapes and sizes. And in fact, nowadays with increased popularity, a lot of didgeridoos are tuned to suit orchestras and musical groups. This is in the key of G sharp. It sounds pretty high pitched. With these shorter didgeridoos, the style of playing is faster and harsher, and more abrupt. What you can see now is very traditional ochre artwork from South Central Arnhem Land. This one's painted and made by a man called George Jungawonga. And it's in the key of D, which is quite a popular key for musical groups. We're getting up into the two metre range and more, more of a ceremonial style of didgeridoo. This one's in the key of G, very deep bass sound. also worth noting that traditionally the didgeridoo wasn't keyed in the European musical notations as a lot of Westerners understand them but they were tuned to the head songman's voice and that could be done in a couple of ways shortening the length of the didgeridoo by simply cutting it off adding an extension to the didgeridoo and making it longer and or opening the end out further so you would varied the volume of air inside the didgeridoo which generally raised the pitch well, now it's up to you. With some consistent practice and a little perseverance, and of course, using the information you've just seen on this video to choose a didgeridoo that suits you, then you'll have years of pleasure ahead of you. Good luck.